Why is neurofeedback so effective? It's the question I get when parents or individuals have done the research. They see neurofeedback is now rated as a level four or five intervention for many mental health disorders and many of the struggles we deal with, ADD, anxiety, OCD, depression, those sorts of things. It's, it's uh, by the way, level five is as high as it gets with mental health interventions. And many therapies, many medications are two or three. So it's getting more and more attention despite the fact that it's not the quick fix, like taking a pill, right? So neurofeedback, when people ask why is it so effective, it's an interesting question because they know it's proven its effectiveness. So the answer is really interesting because with neurofeedback, we're not forcing the brain to do anything, right? We're not throwing a drug in there, we're not throwing some electrical impulse into the brain. Instead, all we're doing is allowing the brain to do its natural thing. And let's imagine we have a brain wave like theta that's running very strong. And we want that theta wave to come down because it's associated with more ease, more happiness, more enjoyment, less ADD, less problems focusing, less issues with anxiety in general. So with neurofeedback, we're rewarding that brain wave when it naturally comes down just a teeny a bit. So that incremental reward creates this very gradual, organic, natural shift in the brain. We're not forcing the brain, we're only rewarding it for a state, an emotional, psychological state that it's already discovered. That state change, by the way, is below the level of our awareness in that moment. That's why we have to add up reward session after reward session after reward session in order to get the brain to change. But when it does change and it begins to move, the brain is reorganizing. Neural pathways are reorganized, communication patterns are reorganized, neurons begin to expand their connectedness. The hundred billion neurons in the brain that have the capacity to connect up to 10,000, each one can have 10,000 connections. That all begins to expand so that when someone completes a course of neurofeedback training, that is not the same brain. Personalities don't change. Individuals, their, their sort of core personality doesn't change. But if, if you were a depressed or angry person and you wanted to hang on to that, most people don't, that changes, of course. But the personality that you think of a child or individual, that does not really change. However, it's a more neuroplastic brain, it's a smarter brain, it functions better. Cognitive skills improve, kids gain 15, 20 points in IQ. So it's a brain that is actually functioning better, it's communicating better, it's doing better, and we can tell all that because we do quantitative EEGs, we're able to map the brain and we can watch it and see those changes over time. It's quite extraordinary. Now this is one in a series of questions I'm answering about neurofeedback. You'll see an, a list of those below if you want to check out some of the other questions. If you'd like to speak to me personally, I'm happy to give you a bit of time. You can call my office fill out, or fill out the form online to choose a time that fits for you. I hope you reach out. I'd be happy to answer more questions if you have them. Again, it's Dr. Randy Kale. I look forward to hearing from you. Take care.